From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're in our Palo Alto studios. The COVID crisis continues. Uh, luckily, we've got the ability to interview guests from remote, and so we're excited to have this next guest. You know, there's a lot of activity going on around equality and gender diversity, uh, Black Lives Matter, you know, and it feels like, there, it really does feel like there's kind of a step function in moving this along. And there's a lot of uh, groups out there that are that are trying to take a very active role. And one of the, the things they're trying to do is help women get on more corporate board seats, more representation. Uh, and we're really excited to have our next guest who's really taking a slightly different approach, a new approach to this. And uh, we're happy to be joined by uh, Rita Scroggin. She is the founder of firstboard.io, and she's also the practice director uh, executive group at Triad Group. So uh, Rita, great to see you. Thank you very much, Jeff, for having me. I'm super excited to be here and to share the story about firstboard.io, what we're doing and how hopefully that will change the world just a little bit. That's great. Well, so <laughs> the way that this came about is I was on LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn all the time, um, and all of a sudden this big picture uh, hit my feed and a ton of familiar faces. I think that's what is four by four by eight. Um, and I see Abby Kearns, Dal Jensen, yep. Eva Mahler, uh, Wendy Pirelli, Jocelyn is in there, uh, Samla's in there. And I thought, wow, I, I know a bunch of these women and I'm always happy to um, you know, promote the, the women in the, in the CUBE alumni. And I reached out and I think it was Wendy said, hey, this is, she said, I'm a founding member of this thing called firstboard.io, and I wanted to learn more, and she said, <laughs> yeah. we well, gotta talk to Rita. So it's great to uh, to meet you, and this is a, a new organization. I think you said you started it at the very beginning of this year, so yeah. why? Let's go kind of to the origin story. Yeah. What gave you the idea? Why did you think that this was something that needed to be done, and and uh, you know what what caused you to actually you know take the leap of faith and, and start Firstboard? Yeah, that, very good question. So in the fall of 2019, um, I did an event in partnership with k l Gates, and uh, it was about how to get on board. And it wasn't gender specific, but I invited a lot of women from my network. And um, through k l Gates, there was um, a speaker on the panel, Cheryl Bolton, who is now a supporter of firstboard.io. And we spoke after the panel discussion, so I was the moderator. And she said, you know, do you place, um, you know, people or women specifically on company boards, on private company boards? I said, um, I do now, let's have a conversation about that. So we talked some more and we kind of felt like there's really a need for companies to, um, to diversify their boards, particularly, particularly private tech companies. And so then I thought about more about the idea. I reached out to a few women in my network and I said, hey, I have this idea. I'm thinking about starting you know, an initiative around this topic, would you be interested in being part of it? And um, you know, a lot of the women who I reached out to said, I'd love the idea, I would love to get involved. So that was really the origin. So then we you know, met, we had a little sort of social get together in I think it was early December in Palo Alto. And then we said, let's launch officially in January, which we did. So in January, we had our first and only in-person meeting. Um, the idea initially was that we would meet every quarter in person, so it would be very localized to Silicon Valley. Um, and then COVID happened and everything changed. And uh, we are now meeting via Zoom every six to eight weeks. We have members who are in different locations. So most of our members are in Silicon Valley, uh, but we also have a member in New York, in Seattle, in uh, Dallas, and I might forget a location, but uh, so we're a little bit more distributed right now. And um, so that is where we are today. So you've done it a little bit different. You, you've got this group of women, it's 32 uh, women in that picture, the founding members. And so you're taking almost like a cohort approach, a group approach. Why, why that approach? What did, what did you see that, that um, wanted you to go that way versus you know, doing individual searches for individual companies, looking for individual you know, kind of board members? Why the group approach? What, what type of dynamic does that introduce? How do uh, the women leverage one another inside of this, this structure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. That's, that's really the idea. The idea is that we work together collaboratively and that we leverage each other's network. So, and we'll raise each other's platform. 
So I might know, you know, 10 or 15 or whatever, you know, decision makers, like say we see CEOs, um, but, you know, the, the next member might know, you know, an equal number or more or less. So what I was thinking is if we leverage each other's network, we exponentially grow our network and we exponentially grow our visibility. So our focus right now is to really raise the profile of firstboard.io and the profile of each member of the group. Um, so it, it's fundamentally different because we're working together kind of almost like a company, um, like an accelerator, where if, if we have a success, it's everybody's success because it raises the, profit, uh, the profile of everybody else. So right. that's the idea, um, which is different than a networking organization where you are an unknown member. And, and um, so we, we're trying to make this you know, in a different way. Right, right. And is the goal uh, within all the women that have, have, have joined the, the, the opening, um, the founding members, for all of them to get on a board? I mean, is that that's all the of goal. them are, I mean, are qualified uh, people to be yeah, on the corporate board? Yeah, I mean, that is the goal, that's the idea. You know, we may not accomplish that in the first round um, because this is a problem that's been going on for a long time, uh, but we're getting close to our first board placement. So that's, a, I think, an initial great success. And we're working on a number of initiatives right now to raise um, the profile. We're doing a video interview with all our supporters. Um, we are creating a campaign, how to reach out to CEOs and VCs. So we're working on a number of things right now behind the background to really target our audience. And our audience is specific to the tech world. So we're focusing really on private tech companies. And um, we're focusing on our decision makers within those organizations um, so whether it's the investor, the private equity, growth equity, uh, or venture capital community, or the CEO, or other board members for that matter, who may be aware that there's an opening um, and we're trying to tap into those as well. Right, right. So you've mentioned Silicon Valley VCs and, and private equity a couple times. So is the focus um, more in, in kind of that ecosystem that we're familiar with here? in Silicon Valley with more uh, private, uh, you know, kind of private and growth opportunities or, or, mm -hmm. or are you also just, you know, fully looking for, you know, large regular public companies as well? It, I mean, we wouldn't turn down a public company opportunity, but we're, you know, not, none of our members have been on a board so far. And I think it's probably more realistic that, you know, the first board position might be at a private tech company where the operating experience is particularly valuable. Um, so that's our primary focus in terms of reaching actively out. But you know, if a if a um, public company would come our way and say we absolutely would love you know, to talk to, you know, some of your uh, members, of course we wouldn't turn that down. Right. But actively, we're going after private tech companies, and they can be located anywhere. Um, so it's not specific just to Silicon Valley. This is you know, of course, a lot of tech companies are clustered there or here. Um, but it could also be a company in New York or Boston or wherever. But the focus is really on tech versus you know. Uh, a, a broader focus of any kind of company. Right, right. So when you're working with, with these women who've never been on a board, um, what do you find is, is kind of the biggest gap that they need to fill, whether that's a real gap or a perceived gap um, in their either skill sets or experience or whatever to you know kind of make the jump and get into uh, one of these board seats? Is it uh, any particular skill, any particular, you know, kind of point of view, what are the types of things that you do as a group to help them uh, be more, uh, better received, I guess, uh, for those mm -hmm. opportunities? Yeah, well, what we don't do is we don't really provide a training program or prepare uh, women. There are other organizations who do that. I think we'll do a very, very good job. You know, some of our members are part of other organizations as well. Um, so what we're thinking more is, you know, the a company oftentimes has, you know, in a certain growth stage, has a gap in some form. And, you know, in looking at board opportunities, I think it's important to identify where is that gap. You know, maybe it's go to market or maybe it is, you know, certain technical expertise and match them up with the experience of our founding members. So we, we don't we don't have a program to prepare women. Um, we're more focused on, okay, we're assuming you're prepared, and that might be to various degrees, um, and we're just trying to match kind of the operating expertise to the gap um, on a, on a, for an independent board member at any given company. Right, right. And I think you, we talked before we turn on the cameras, you know, the, the three things you said you focus on really is, is operational expertise, 
uh, scale uh, experience as well as domain expertise. Yeah. And so you're really trying to kind of map against a gap that the company has yeah. against a skill set that one of the, the members has. Yeah. So what I've, you know, so far I've um, sort of facilitated three different board opportunities and um, two of them, what they had in common that they were, that the company was looking for somebody who really had, you know, domain expertise with, you know, the, the audience they were looking at um, and who understood the buyer and who had deep expertise in go, you know, go to market strategies, developing them. So that's, that's one example, right? And the other company, the third one was looking for somebody who had uh, connections in the space who really understood, you know, that particular domain. Um, and so it, it all depends. And I think it also depends on how, what stage the company's in. Um, and I think the further along a company is, the more it's about, um, you know, governance and regulations and earlier on, it's really filling a certain gap on the leadership team. Right. Um, and the private equity world is also very interesting to us because oftentimes there is, there's a planned exit, there's a timeline, and there are certain growth objectives the company wants to reach. And that's a great opportunity, I think, for first board to bring in uh, a founding member with that particular operating expertise. Right, right. So I'm curious, that's a great segue in, into kind of the, the customer side, if you will, the people that are looking for boards, uh, board members. Have you seen uh, over the last several months or years, I'll open it up, you know, kind of a shift in terms of, of people, A, just kind of accepting that there are going to be uh, more women and people of color on the board, but also more of, of kind of an active, an active search and, and a more, um, you know, kind of progressive uh, goal to make sure that they, you know, do increase the diversity uh, on their boards, whether that be uh, for women or people of color or whatever, just to bring more diversity. Have you seen mm -hmm. a shift in your customer base in terms of the really focus and prioritization on that? Well, I think it's certainly on, on people's mind, and I think now more so than, than ever, you know, with the recent changes and, and um, sort of uprising of Black Lives Matter. Um, but I wouldn't say that has really transferred over into real meaningful diversity on board. So I think we still have a long, long way to go and um, there's an organization, Him For Her, and um, I think it was the Kellogg's Management Institute. They did a study last year, and they found that you know, privately heavily funded companies, 60% of those don't have a single woman, woman on the board. Um, and I think women in general held about 7% of board seats at these companies. So it is, I think it's still a long way to go, um, but I think it's very important that in the future, a larger, larger uh, proportion of the population is reflected in the boards, right? So whether it's women, women of color, you know, people of color, so everybody should be part of the leadership team on the board level and on the leadership level. And I think that has become certainly more of a topic, I think, for, especially for large companies. And I think startups are now recognizing that it's important for them too, especially if they want to be perceived as a, um, as a company which, you know, has fair and equal values. Right, right. So given that, given that um, you know, kind of landscape, if you will, what are kind of the expectations that you have with this founding member group? And I presume there'll be other uh, groups in the future once these, these people all find a, a great board seat and, and are doing their thing. You know, kind of, is it uh, a really tough road ahead? Do you see that, that it's really not that tough on the macro, maybe in the macro level, but on the micro level, you know, there are some real opportunities. You know, how are you as a group of, of 32 um, founding members, you know, trying to take this hill, if you will, mm -hmm. against uh, pretty tough odds, actually? Well, I think we're going to take it one step at a time. I mean, we already have, we're, you know, we, I mean, we did a press release. We have a website. We have some visibility on LinkedIn. Um, and we already have been able to, you know, curate three different, you know, board conversations. So I think, you know, step by step, I think we will make a, we'll become more visible. I think we will be more known. We will have more opportunities to introduce founding members, this current cohort and future cohorts. And through that, I think we will make, you know, progress. So I'm very optimistic that we can um, make a difference, that we can get more women on boards. And um, once you know the founding members have joined a board, um, the plan is to launch a group where uh, basically we create a peer group, um, which will then 
mentor and support the next cohort. Um, and we also have an amazing group of um, supporters and um, partners already. Um, we have Steve Singh from Madrona Ventures. We have Rohini from NGP Capital. And we're always looking for more partners and supporters. So, you know, I, uh, I'm not going to list everybody right now, but I'm very proud about that we have partners and supporters who bought into the mission and who are helping us accomplish the mission. So I feel very optimistic that we will be able uh, to move the needle. You yeah. know, even, you know, it might be at a slower pace, um, but it will still be making a difference. Right, right. Well, uh, you know, the 100th anniversary of, of women getting the vote <laughs> is coming up here in a, in a couple of weeks, right? And that took, that took a long time to get done. So this stuff does not, it does not happen easily. It, it does not happen overnight. But I, I would think certainly too, with the increasing number of, of women in VC um, roles as partners and yeah. are also getting on board seats that, you know, hopefully that, um, you know, the things are starting to fall in the right direction and, and hopefully with each progressive placement is a little bit easier uh, than yeah. the one before. <laughs> so Rita, it's, you know, it's great to meet you. Everyone I talked to about you is, you know, so excited about the work that you're doing and, and what you're doing with Thank First you. Board. So I want to give you kind of the, the last word uh, before we sign off. Um, how should people learn more? How can people support the cause? How should people, you know, get involved um, so that they yeah. can move the needle? That's great, thank you. Um, get in touch with us. On, uh, if you go to the website, firstboard.io, um, there's a way you know, to partner with us. There's a link to partner with us. There's a link if you are interested in joining you know, in, uh, the future cohort, please you know, contact me and I will respond. And um, we would love to uh, talk to companies who are thinking about diversifying their board. We would love to talk to VCs for whom this is important. So please get in touch and, um, and we'll figure out how to change the world together. Right, and oh, by the way, most studies show you get better business outcomes, right? With, with diversity yeah. of opinion and yeah. diversity of points of view. So it's not only the right thing to do, it's also, it's also very it's, good yeah. business. So, and I think, you know, the next decade, we are ready for a change. I think um, the, the society, I think is ready for a change. And I think how companies run and are operated I think people are ready for a change too. So I think the timing is really, really right. And I think we can make it happen. Great. Well, Rita, thank you again thank for, you. Uh, for taking a few minutes and telling your, telling your story and, and joining us on theCUBE. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure, Jeff, and I look forward to talk again. Yeah, maybe in person yeah. after we get through all this maybe COVID, in person. COVID yeah. madness. All right, well, thanks again, yeah. Rita. Thank you all very right. much. Great. She's Rita, I'm Jeff, you're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.